Hey everybody, coming up on this episode of Galactic Inquiry, an interview with 15-year-old activist and girl gamer Tuesday Kane, Wes Bell joins us from The Whole Truth, and fan art, websites, and more, coming up right after this. Hey, it's Michael Viewmaster Moreland, and welcome to episode two of Galactic Inquiry, the show where we feature you, the citizens of Star Citizen. I want to send a special thank you to all our patrons and a special shout out to Zerlo, Lady Hawk, and Jam Pop for your recent pledges. Thanks so much. Now, I recently had the opportunity to induct 111 new initiates into the Galactic, the Galactic Inquisition. Inquisition. That's right, the Galactic Inquisition. And thank you for so joining up. We're glad you're joining our ranks. That's the Galactic Inquisition, promoting safety through conformity. And now it's time for the Word of the Week. Word of the Week. The Word of the Week is an incentive. Now, normally you're not looking for heavy things to put in your cargo hold, but have you ever wondered how you're going to get your golf game into space? How are you going to hit a hole-in-one on the deck of the Bengal carrier without having the ball going completely into orbit around the nearest moon? The answer is an inceptium. At number 117 on the periodic table, it's the heaviest element ever created, outweighing lead by 40%. Now, there's some definite attractive force with that much mass, so go ahead and throw your golf bag into the cargo hold and watch your ball cling to the deck plates. You can find an unceptium right next to an obtainium in your local elemental supermarket. And now it's time for the news. From the world of real aerospace, 3D printers are as commonplace as microwaves these days. If you don't own your own 3D printer, you can always order your own custom 3D part on many online stores. There's one place where 3D printers haven't been, however, and that's outer space. But that's about to change. In August, a small cube containing the first 3D printer designed for space will make its debut on the International Space Station. Its mission? To prove 3D printing can work in a microgravity environment. That could pave the way to wholesale printing of basic tools for use on board the ISS and beyond. There's even some hope that entire habitats could be printed robotically ahead of a future manned mission to the Moon and Mars. Looks like we're one small step closer to the Star Trek replicator. Closer to home, Wes Bell joins us from his YouTube channel, The Whole Truth, to share hard by the news. Once we hack into the show, we will be able to prove to the world that the Viewmaster is evil. Beep beep. Quiet, I'm like, we're busy. But Air Gap, there are many Morleans. Look! Beep beep! Quiet them, luck. Yes, but look, there are these likeies, see? We must find these these likeies and win them to our cause. Once we show the world our video evidence, the Moronians will be crushed! Beep beep! Uh, oh, 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 we hacked in! Oh, peoples of Earth! We have learned that hundreds of Morleans have infiltrated your world! We are here to help. We have video evidence captured when we broke into Viewmaster's stronghold. Once you have seen the horror, we know that you will join our cause. Show the video! Beep, beep. It's a sock drawer! I've all been murdered! <laughs> Game over, man! Game over! What are we gonna do now? So you see, the Viewmaster has murdered hundreds of innocent socks and stuffed their lifeless bodies into his top drawer so that he might look at them and relive his sick fantasies! So many dead socks! And some of them didn't even have mates. I don't have a mate. Oh, oh man, I'm sorry, man, I forgot. It's okay, don't give up hope. We'll find you a mate someday. 
Are we back? Okay. <laughs> you know, some of my best friends wear Birkenstocks. And back to the news, Wes Bell brings us details of crew stations on multiplayer ships. Wes. Thanks, Mike. This week in the news, CIG Mike Northeast, one of the devs, commented about how he envisions crew stations on multiplayer ships. In his description of exactly what a crew station is, he explains that in larger ships, players will have to rely on other players for certain information. The stations don't have specific names because they expect the player to be able to customize the station with numerous tasks and then assign a player or an NPC to that station. This means that a station will be able to have multiple functions on it and these functions can be set on any station that's on the ship. This is going to allow you to customize your player's roles on your ship. Crew stations should also scale with the type of ship. A small, single-seater ship has very little space for a station, so it would be a more simplistic HUD-oriented station that allows you to do things like create weapon groups. Multi-role ships like the Constellation or the Freelancer would have a bit more complexity and allow you to set up stations for radar, weapon management, power, and so on. Capital ships like the Idris would add even more functionality like detailed power management systems that take into account the more complex nature of a huge capital ship and its systems. Mike Northeast then breaks it down even further by explaining a seat action. A seat action is a single task on a ship like weapons, radar monitoring, and helm control. The captain can then create roles, which are a group of seat actions, and then assign those roles to players or stations. For crew stations version 1, it's likely that seat actions will be locked to specific crew stations so that it can be delivered to us quicker. The roles functionality would be added on top of that. Mike Northeast goes on to talk about privileges as well. Privileges is a system where the captain of the ship can assign security levels for crewmen. This will allow us to add or refuse access to certain ship systems at our own discretion. The plan is to make this system persistent as well so that when you log off and back on again, roles and privileges are saved for your crew. This is starting to sound very impressive. Imagine being out in space and disabling a ship and then boarding it. The captain's still alive somewhere on the ship, so you have to gain access to the ship system somehow. You can do so by hacking the privileges systems at a station. This would give you access to the ship's navigation, then you could ransom it, steal it, whatever. It's definitely got me excited. Thanks, Wes. You can watch Wes's whole news show on his YouTube channel, The Whole Truth. And that's your aerospace news. Galactic Inquiry's central mission is to feature the works of our fans. And uh, here's what we found on the interwebs this week. First up, if you like your lore and your fiction in a little bit more easy to read format, Citizen John Seiler has been collecting the various comlinks into ebooks for German and English speaking fans. Check out his forum posts on rsi.com and follow the links to your favorite ebook portal. Disco Lando is up to his usual hijinks. Here's his latest. It's said that the test of a man's courage is how he performs in the face of danger. To meet these challenges on the racetrack and beyond, not just any regulation gray cat will do. Because you're a unique breed of racer, aren't you? The kind of person who doesn't know the meaning of the word fear. So you'll need a gray cat that'll put that fear into everyone that sees it. Even if that includes yourself. Well, Lobot Industries is proud to bring to you the Grey Cat 6000 SUX. There's also a custom physics indicator that would help you properly identify rough and treacherous terrain if it didn't somehow exist in its own pocket reality and bobble to its own devices. Now the custom physics indicator fell to Earth a thousand years ago, and while it can be replicated, it cannot be controlled. Do not taunt the custom physics indicator. Don't forget, we have a personalized grill large enough for everyone to see, so you don't have to slow down to answer people when they go, what the f is that? <laughs> Thanks, Disco. <clears throat> and citizen Joey Lanford has been working on his epic board game called Star Citizen War Games. We had a chance to sit down and play test it a little bit over an afternoon, and our own citizen Uncle Bob is taking a moment to show you what the game's various components are. Citizen Joey Lanford sent us this wonderful prototype game called Star Citizen. It's a board game of the Star Citizen universe. So I thought I'd unbox it right here and we'll take a look at it. It has a user manual. It lets you play one of four factions. You can play the Van Duel, the Terran Coalition, United Earth Empire, 
for the Xi'an Empire. It's for two to four players, it has a tactical card. It has an empire system income chart where you track how many credits each of the different factions has. And here's the centerpiece. Four bags of ship counters that represent everything from fighters to Bengal carriers. You got a set of cards for each of the four factions. Plus you have these explorer cards which throw in a random element. So we did spend some time and we attempted to play the game. And it's a little rough in spots, but frankly, I think it really has potential. It took us about two Carla hours to learn. It took us about two Carla hours to learn. <laughs> Six Earth hours. <laughs> and multiply it by four, but it's an exponential curve that changes over time. So, anyway. <laughs> So you never actually achieved understanding. We never achieved. <laughs> we approached understanding asymptotically. <laughs> yes. We approached understanding asymptotically because of Carla's constant interruptions with questions. <laughs> this is a fairly involved game. It has quite a few pieces. It will take a little bit of effort to learn. If you're a serious war gamer, you won't have any trouble with it. If you'd like to help Joey develop this game, you can contact him on the Galactic Inquiry subreddit. Bob out. Uh, we took uh, some time to actually play some rounds of the game, and we're going to put a video with that gameplay online as well for you guys to take a look at. So, hey, thanks to uh, John Seiler, Disco Lando, and Joey Lanford. You are on this week's Fan Frequency. I'm here with uh, Tuesday Kane and her dad, Billy. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey. Good to see you. Tuesday, good. thank you so much for coming to say hello. Thank you for having us. So, Dad, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've uh, brought up this incredibly precocious daughter. and uh, I deal with her. <laughs> Did you have any idea that was coming? Uh, no, I have no. I never know what's happening from day to day. I have no clue what's going to happen. So I don't know. We just have fun, you know. That's that's really, I guess, the hallmark of us as uh, a family is we just try to have a good time all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So you and I go back quite a ways. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do. Back to Origin Systems in the '90s, mm -hmm. and uh, you've kind of had a kind of a very career from that. You were uh, you were very one of the more outspoken. Um, members of the of the Origin Systems community. Yeah, I was uh, back at Origin, and that, I guess a lot of people don't know this. I suppose that uh, I was the one guy that was always raising his hand at meetings. So we had these. Uh, they, that. yeah, the they would bring in the executive or the brass from EA, and this was in '92 to '98 or whatever, and. Uh, I just figured somebody should ask questions, so mm -hmm. I'd raise my hand and ask all the executives all the questions that, that I wanted to ask, and after a while, I kind of would start gathering questions from other people that were scared to ask. So I would, uh, I'd, then I started writing the 3 by 5 cards out. Um, I remember those cards. Right. You'd come and into then, the main room with that. This giant <laughs> stack of cards, and uh, yeah, and so I, would, I got to the point where they were like, okay, anybody any questions, and no one would ask. So I would be like, okay, and I'd stand up and I have my big stack of three by five cards, and they'd be like, oh god, here he goes again. <laughs> so yeah, <clears throat> and that was a lot of that was a lot of fun because it it actually got the execs to kind of turn into real people. I was uh, I was playing a game of one of our old games the other day, and I'm thinking about you know we had to write our own memory managers, we had to write the video compression stuff for those all things, the, all the three D uh, uh, everything engines and everything that didn't exist. It didn't, none of that existed. No, we had to, for the time. Yeah, we would start a project and say, oh, we're going to do a three D game. It's like, okay, well, we better write a three D engine. Better go find a book. We better, <laughs> yeah, and we had to write sound, you know, uh, sound drivers and the God, everything from scratch. Video and playback, everything. Yeah. Everything, and it, and it seems so weird nowadays to that you can go, oh, you can just go pick that up, pick that up, oh, get Unity and use this, and oh, you don't even have to get Photoshop anymore. You can download GIMP, and it's yeah. just like, it's an, it's insane how much stuff is available now. A, a lot has been done for us now. And that's great too because it feeds the the, uh, the community of uh, fans and people who want to learn how to do this but aren't quite up to being, you know, hired. Let's return to the big story. The uh, the one that uh, the one that got you on BBC, you know, oh. have your <laughs> that say. Was crazy. Goodness gracious. That was crazy. Have, have your say. Crazy. Was that the one to show you? Yeah, right? it was yeah, BBC have World mm -hmm. Have Your Say. Yeah. World Have Your Say. So you've created a little bit of notoriety for yourself. Um, you're very active Oops. out in the world, <laughs> and um, <Oops>. <laughs> <laughs> obviously you you supported Tuesday with this, yeah. Billy. And uh, tell us so the story so. about your experience at the Texas State Capitol building. <laughs> so let's take a moment. The filibuster was 
uh, for what reason? Who was doing the filibuster? And um, why? It was Wendy Davis and um, the filibuster over women's um, health and women's uh, reproductive rights. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there with one of my friends. Uh, her name is Simone, mm -hmm. and uh, we were sitting there. And she was saying, you know, what should we write on these signs? You know, we have to write something. And uh, she actually took one of the markers and wrote down what I said. I was like, how about Jesus isn't a dick, so keep him out of my vagina. So she wrote it on the sign. And um, <laughs> then, and we wrote a few other ones, like, you know, um, pro-choice is an anti-Christ, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, we and th were, these are a direct refutation of the people who are on the other side of this argument. Well, we've mm -hmm. been there for like weeks. Yeah, we'd been there. Uh, I think that was the second or third day that we were there. We'd, mm -hmm. uh, we'd been going early in the morning and staying until really late at night, sometimes like two in the morning. So as, you know, as a parent, as a young daughter and a son, um, how can you empower them to navigate the waters of uh, gender um, politics in games? I mean, how does that, how do you, what can you do? I guess I would say that while the first thing that I would probably gravitate toward would be talking about my daughter and what her experiences was, but I think it's it's also important to think about you know how would I deal with this with my son, and we've spent a lot of time with my wife and I and the kids. We talk a lot about gaming and going online, how dangerous it is, and what you have to avoid. Um, you know, do things in public, talk to us about weird things that happen. Um, but we've kind of tried to attack it at the source. You know, trying to teach them good etiquette online, trying to teach them what they can't, should and shouldn't say. I don't see how you can teach your kids to do anything unless you're doing it with them, right? Mm -hmm. So you wanna, you wanna go in and you wanna model some of this behavior. So when we go, we're playing online, we talk to each other, we trash talk amongst ourselves. Um, and then, you know, talking to the people online, either through headset or whatever, you, you can't expect your kid to just jump right into the pool and know how to swim, right? right? So you have to you have to work with them to to learn that stuff. Let's talk a little bit about Star Citizen since it's a <laughs> Star Citizen show. <laughs> now, Star Citizen is, is in its infancy. There's not a, a persistent universe yet, so there's mm -hmm. not a sense of characters. They're still working on the female character, as a matter of fact. It's only been males in there. Have you had a chance to look at it at all or see what's going on in that in that space? Yeah. Um, well, I put in on the original Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Um, I had the opportunity to go uh, during the first 24, the last 24 hours of Kickstarter to go down there. Um, I've downloaded everything that there was to download. I've run around in the hangar. I, mean, I want it to be so good. <laughs> I really want it to be so good. And so far, it's been great. But you yeah. know, I, uh, I'm, there have I think been people I'm, have, who uh, would write to us and say, "Do not screw this up." Other developers. Yeah. Because we're inventing the model here. Yes. And wow. The spotlights are on, oh, dude, and, and yeah, yeah and y'all can't mess it up. Yeah, you know, you can't mess it up. <laughs> so uh, no Tuesday, you, have you had a chance to kind of catch any of the action on uh, Star Citizen? I actually have. My dad and I um, went through it and played it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I know you know this. The art is amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, from every angle, there are so many different textures, and I, I love a game with good art. Um, mentioning one of my favorite games, uh, especially like art and animation, The Last of Us. Right. It, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the art in uh, Star Citizen, amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, you said you like looking down and seeing your feet. That is one of those <laughs> things. I love that about a game. If I'm looking down and I can't see my feet, I'm thoroughly disappointed. Right. Why did? Why am I this apparition with no feet? <laughs> what is happening? I don't have hands or anything. Like I'm holding a flashlight and it's just floating. Right. That was one of those details that I noticed. Um, also, when the camera sways as you're walking and I can look down and see my feet walking, sure. that's a plus. It feels very realistic and uh, it's very easy to get lost in the game. Speaking of you know, this perspective as a girl, do you think this game is heading the right direction for for you? For that it will draw you in and make you want to play? I love space games. Mm -hmm. I love um, being in a spacecraft and being able to shoot at things while flying through space, but that might just be me. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, my friends are kind of weird. We all like that kind of stuff, mm. which is, I shouldn't have to say that we're weird for liking that kind of stuff just mm. because we're not stereotypical, like, right. dress-up game girls. <laughs> um, but I would like to see female characters, and I hear that that's coming. Yep. Um, and I'm pleased to hear that. Uh, Customization. Girls are really big on customization. Sure. Um, and there's a lot of that in the game that I noticed. Um, I'm not really sure how you would make it more appealing 
to girls. Considering how young the game is, I was um, extremely impressed with uh, how much detail everything had. And art takes hours. Like, um, just the appreciation for um, (laughs) video game artists. Like, they need a round of applause every time they finish anything. (laughs) (laughs) So, hey, I'd like to thank you both for coming to say hello. Sure. Um, You you have been a longtime friend and uh, a very vocal uh, voice. Uh, in the gaming community, Tuesday, welcome, and I'm glad me. you're having some fun in in the space and and kind of have the kind of centeredness that you need in order to kind of both survive and, and prosper both uh, in gaming and in the world. Uh, it's been great to have you both on the show. Cool. Right. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, that's our show for the day. Thanks for being here. If you'd like to become a Patreon backer, you could enjoy some of the benefits of supporting a show for and by the fans. And if you'd prefer not to be billed on a monthly basis, you can do one-off payments by reaching out to us at pledge at galacticinquiry.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll get a ping every time we put up a new YouTube. Yay. And keep in touch through us through your favorite social portal. You can find out links to your social portals right there on our Galactic Inquiry website. You know, this show belongs to you, the Star Citizen community, so be sure to give us your feedback at the new Galactic Inquiry subreddit. Centerpiece of our show is your fan creations. If you have something cool to share, send it to us. And if it doesn't suck, we'll put it on the show. And if you don't send something in, well, there could be more sock puppets. And remember, we're listening. I don't know why I watch this show. I need to create more than three YouTube accounts so I can dislike this show even more. Oh, why do I watch this show? Oh, I hate this show. Uh, Linux is better than Windows.